See ya everyone, welcome to my video on Hachiko's Heaven. So I heard a while ago that this is the saddest movie ever, maybe it is, and by now I don't think uh, there is people who need a spoiler alert, so let me tell you briefly how the movie goes. Commuting by train, Professor Parker Wilson finds an Akita dog at the station. Then he has the intention of finding the owner, but he has no luck. So he decides to take him home. And uh, a little after that, he decides to keep him. But he has no name for him. So he meets with his Japanese friend, who explains a little bit about the, the Akita dog and they come up with the name Hachiko. Then they grow fond of each other. Everything is good and peachy. Hachiko develops this routine of waiting for Parker every evening at the station. He does that for a long time until one day Parker dies and uh, Hachiko refuses to accept this fact. So he just continues waiting for his master uh, who can never come home again. Based on the ending of the movie, I started thinking about the possible existence of a heaven for dogs or animals, but maybe that is not a clever idea. Am I right? Yes, I'm right! Wrong! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was lying again. So, um, in the end, Hachiko is dying and he remembers the best moments with his human so maybe that's how heaven is for Hachiko what I want to do is explore what's out there regarding this Hachiko's heaven join me in religion there is a relevant particular mention of animals in Buddhism there is the samsara which is the cycle of no beginning and no end of repeated uh, birth, meaningless existence, and subsequent death. And there are also three things that perpetrate this cycle, which are hatred, lust, and ignorance. In Buddhism, they say there are six realms. Three of them are good, three of them are bad, like hell. So the good ones are uh, human, demigod, and heavenly. The bad ones are animal, ghost, and hellish. So they say, the Buddhist, you finish the cycle, you escape this cycle, that's the best word, you escape the cycle, and you are released when you reach the Nirvana. I mean you, referring to humans. But what about the animals, because they don't mention animals attaining nirvana. So, let's take a look. The animal realm is just above hell. So, does that mean being an animal is really that bad? In the animal realm, uh, you can see the animals are incapable of having a rational thought and they cannot reflect on their, on their situation. Besides that, uh, many animals are being attacked and eaten by other animals. Uh, they are being used domestically as beasts of burden. Something else is that they are being slaughtered for food. And uh, the list of negative things goes on and on. In the samsara, they also mentioned the, the term plan of misery. So in cosmological terms, the animals are believed to inhabit a distant world separated from humans, not by space, but by state of mind. And to be an animal is considered to, to suffer intensely because you're not smart enough to evolve spiritually, then uh, you live in constant terror and then die in constant terror, and finally you're incapable of attaining the, the higher spiritual state, not to mention the Nirvana. Uh, here is the thing, there is an important statement that I cannot ignore. The Buddhists say that there are 
very negative karmic consequences, karmic after karma. When you when you see the situation that there is between prey and predator, so think about it. The predator kills the animal, uh, kills the prey, so it's gonna go lower in the spiritual level. So the next realm uh, lower is the ghost realm, and on the other side you have the the prey. The prey is gonna die constantly. It's gonna be incapable of ascending to the human realm again. So. Buddhists say it's almost impossible to escape from that darkness. Apparently, Buddhism already gave up on the animals. But uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna throw in a personal idea that I hope makes sense. So uh, all the horrors that the Buddhism consider about the animal realm, I don't know why they forget to mention how the, the humans can can change the game here for the better. The upside is that uh, out there there are many examples of how to solve this that can um, give us hope. Buddhists talk about animals not being capable of controlling their instincts because they're not smart enough. And we have watched probably all of us these documentaries where the cheetah chases the gazelle or the eagle catches the snake. That is the rule and that occurs mostly in the wild, there's no doubt. But in contrast, we have some exceptions that I love. I need to mention that I love because humans can break that instinctive behavior and by doing that, the violence stops. That's why I want to show you this beautiful example of Wally, the emotional support alligator in the US. This is Wally, the emotional support alligator. So by being surrounded and raised by people from a young age, it was possible to suppress the killer instinct of Wally, the killer alligator, let's say. So how can we explain that Wally can go shopping? That this predator can go shopping. How can you explain that this predator is floating in a pool full of children? Where where is the reptilian brain here? And what happened to the fire or fly response? There are lots of similar cases on the internet. You can see something similar related to cows, lizards, cats, dogs, and many other animals. Endless uh, situations. But they all reinforced my idea that humans have the power of breaking this violent behavior. And I think that would help animals to go to the higher spiritual level. But let's continue with Hachiko. In the end, uh, you see Hachiko having a vision or a memory of him and his human. And uh, I think for him that, that would be his heaven. Because after all, uh, his human Professor Parker was everything to him. So um, realize that for every human year, dogs age an equivalent of seven years. And they spend most of that time waiting for you and playing with you. So that's the importance. I, I pretty much like that idea because at least this movie is a very good example of how we can help animals to to ascend spiritually in this case maybe going back to the human realm if that makes sense if that really happens and i think this is evident because you can tell the the very strong connection the very strong emotional uh, bond that defeats the the wild instinct and i'm sure you have experience you have felt that with other animals too so what do you think i'm sorry again if i saturated you with too much information oh my God. i try to combine these two subjects because i think 
it makes sense and I hope you all agree. And I have one last question. Uh, have you felt the connection when you look an animal in the eye? Finally, it's a comfort to know that humans have the power to make animals' lives um, meaningful. So, um, what we need to do is change their fates and also mainly we need to challenge this infernal realm that Buddhists teach. And uh, don't forget to be rebels. Bye.